All right, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to keep your battery system charged up at least a little bit to get you by through the winter time that when we don't get to actually any uh, or too much generation of uh, power through our solar panels because of the clouds and you know rain and everything else. It's really frustrating, I'm sure, for a lot of us. Uh, we don't like our system to be uh, turning off and turning on and turning off and turning on multiple times because that just doesn't help. Um, computer systems don't like that. Uh, so how can we keep this generate uh, this in the inverters on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, low power coming in from the solar panels? And how can we offset that but yet keep everything that we have on our circuits um, running without it in? All we have to worry about is our battery system to keep that uh, powered up enough to keep this going. So I'm going to go over in this, in this video how to uh, uh, keep that going, at least limp it along, help you out. Unless you're really generating a lot of uh, power or consuming a lot of power, then uh, you'll need a, a different uh, charger. But in this case, I'm going to kind of show you how I'm doing it. All right. So in this case, I got a couple EG4 6500EX uh, 48 volt. Um, from Signature Solar. Um, got all wired in here, um, all the way through the back. I'll, I'll show some pictures of how I have it without the, my cart in the way. Um, let's see, I got the, uh, the EG4-6 batteries uh, that are set up right here. Have the wires coming off here and going all the way over just the normal setup. That uh, works good. So I end up throwing in a, a, a cart I had that way I can keep all my supplies readily available, whether that's wire cutters, meters, those kind of things uh, ready to go. So if there's a problem, I don't have to go searching for things. I have everything right on hand um, and ready to rock and roll, whatever we need to do to keep things rolling. So, okay, so I'll come back to that in just a minute. So, and then I have everything kind of running over, going into a panel, 220 volt. Um, then I have a couple outlets in case I need to use power right here. I have 120 volt outward there and a 240 outlet there um, that works good if I have to hook something up uh, down here I have the solar on off switch connector uh, so I have two sets in this case coming in um, and then on the panel I actually have it for the EG4 uh, line one and line two that's over here on this side and then I have my uh, transfer switch um, that's going to be going to the house so I can I can control everything right here and then I have a 120 volt and the 240 volt that goes to the ones right underneath so I can if I need to do any testing or checking so okay so, all right and then up above I actually wired in a whoops I actually wired in a outlet there so I can actually run it over to my transfer switch cord I kind of just have that along the wall above the door and it kind of comes down around over to the Reliance. This actually was a really easy system to hook up. Um, they did a really good job in keeping it simple. Uh, you can see it's everything's running, plugged in. And this, if uh, if you didn't have, uh, this is the same cord that you actually would use. If you're running to your generator. So, but I have it set up differently. So, um, it'd be the same system if, if you're using Reliance and you would take that cord, uh, plug it into your generator on the other end. But in this case, I'm using my my power system in place of the generator. So that's why that outlet is there. So pretend that outlet was on the generator that you're gonna be running and same kind of thing. Everything is set up temporarily if I needed to, but I'll go over that in another video. So with this one, we're gonna be talking about uh, power generation. So, um, so then I just ran some conduit underneath my workbench here. And it kind of comes up. Sorry for the rat's nest. We're always working on something here. And that's my uh, transfer switch. And that goes into my panel. That way I can run. So the difference is on this one, I actually put an outlet that goes directly to my uh, breaker panel outside that goes to the grid. That's the only thing uh, separate. Otherwise, my cord goes to my power strip here. And everything's running off the battery. Because I'm trying to keep everything running on the battery. And that's my backup for the winter time or if I need to generate something I need some uh, uh, grid power so and that but that's where I'm going to uh, show you what I do with it in the winter time so as you can see everything is on all my circuits are running everything is good so 
All right, so that's kind of how I ran it there. Um, let's see. So I'm going to show you how I have the everything else set up. So in this case, so I'm going to have my this charger, which is this is what it looks like. So, and then what I have is my batteries here. And in this case, I actually had to put some tape here. It actually, uh, because I can't use the the lock. So, depend on your situation. If you can do this safely, keep, you know, keep it uh, like that, and everybody's safe, then then that's a good thing. So, um, but in this case, I actually have it just hooked up to the the positive to the positive side, negative to the negative side. Before you actually hook this charger up to your batteries, make sure you shut everything down. The, our life's not worth making a mistake. The whole point of doing this is to prolong life and and have fun in the, in the meantime, kind of learning different things. So, so shut all your power, shut all your breakers off on the batteries. Shut off your solar panel uh, with that switch. Turn off your inverters. Turn off your breaker or unplug that. You're not going to get any feedback, but it's always good to be safe. So, um, turn off the breakers there. Turn off your inverters. Once everything's shut down, maybe give it a few minutes, and then take uh, your cable. Now, in this case, I, this cable here was actually uh, didn't give you very much uh, slack, so I actually had to cut off the uh, the uh, housing that wraps around the wires. And uh, if you're doing that, just be very careful not to cut your wire. Um, just do tiny little uh, slices with your uh, cutters. Something like that, and then uh, just slide that piece back. That actually keeps everything looking nice and nice and neat. Okay, to the to the uh, length that you need. So, say positive there, negative there. Then I was able to go ahead and turn your system back on, turn your breakers on. Remember, this one is your top top one that runs everything. So you always know, start with that one, then work to your next one. Start with those. Go over, turn your uh, the solar panels on, the breakers on, those kind of things, you know, different order. Um, yeah, so you can actually do your breakers, batteries, solar, then push the buttons in for your inverters once those kick in. So, kind of how I do it there. Okay, so once that's done, um, and in this case, say I haven't even uh, plugged this in, it's just hooked up here. Okay, so what you're going to do. Shut your door and get that out of the way. So you got your uh, cord here. Okay, that's your cord. It's going to be going on there. All right. All right, we're going to go put that cord and that. Plug those in. Give me a second. There you go. So plug that in. In this case, I'm going to actually just kind of stick it in there. And you got your other end, right? You got your other end here. Right. So, I'm going to just bring that over here. Okay, then you got your cord in. And we'll stick it in our outlet. Remember, this one's hooked up to the grid in my case. But if you had the generator, just uh, put it in the generator. Okay. And then I just have my cord running. You put your cord up against the wall, anything like that. I like to slide my cord underneath, and you can always tape this off. So, you know, clean it up to so if nobody trips on it. So I'll just slide that underneath. So, then you got your battery kicking on, or your charger kicking on, excuse me. So, and that's going to do it that. It'll start charging here. See the. So now sometimes you're not going to see it blinking, okay? And it'll just be charging like I think it's charging. Um, but in this case, we just we want this unit on. It's running, as you can see. Red is charging. So what I found is if I I can run things off, like unplug that during the day, run things, or even on if you have a time when when your power bill is going to be higher, you could actually go and unplug at the wall run this thing through the day or through the night that way you're at least maintaining i think this gets about a thousand watts an hour roughly somewhere in there um so at least you're bringing something in um but it, but you want to make sure this top battery is the one that's actually staying higher if 
I've noticed if I get below the two dots, or excuse me, if I get uh, two dots, then I'm kind of like, eh, maybe it's going to shut down. So you want to plug this thing in and run it. But if it's at three dots or four dots, no problem. So I ha I, you can have the other ones at one, yeah, one or two dots. That's not, a, that's not a problem before you put your charger on. But your main one is you want that first battery, your control battery. That is the cable coming off that's communicating with it. You want that, the master battery, I think is what we, that was called. So you want that one to be at least um, two if three. Three or four is always a good thing. So, um, so if you're getting down to two lights on the first battery, plug, plug the charger in. Get that thing uh, running, and you'll have less issues with your system shutting down. And that way we can keep things rolling. So, hope this kind of this video helps. Um, let me know in the comments if uh, if there's anything new you want to see. I know I was a little wordy, but I want to try and get that information out to you because it's hard to find stuff um, that just it keeps it simple. So, so that's how I'm doing it. Um, probably if I got the uh, bigger unit in the future charger then I could probably uh, char charge it up faster but at the same time when it's charging up fa faster and you're on the grid well your bill's going to go up because you're using more more watts um, so in this case but it'll work for any battery just make sure you're you know it's parallel in to it so it's not you're not going to get the reading on here the reading on on the inverters that tell you how much power you came in will not reflect what the charger actually put in so that's going to be extra besides the uh, inverter. So it's going to throw you off on your numbers if you're running those numbers like that. Um, but just remember this one gets around, I think it's around 1,000 watts, I think, when I when I uh, add it up using Ohm's Law. Um, so there you go. Hope that helps. Um, let me know what you think and, and where uh, questions you have, and I'll start throwing some other videos out on other little key things that might help you out. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a great day.